writing tips I would give to my younger self. Yes, hmm, interesting. Uh, I would say um, get get started. I, I was, didn't imagine myself as being a writer in my younger self, so I would actually tell myself to get cracking. You always were interested in it, and it's more fun than going out in the town. <laughs> No, seriously, um, I would say go for it. Go, go for it much younger, you'll get published earlier. And with any luck, you might be richer sooner as well. <laughs> yeah, with, with, the, with um, being, being so young, uh, I think the confidence may kind of can lack with a lot of people. Um, um, would, you, would you say that's a fair statement? I would say so, yes. I wasn't a very confident person in, in my childhood, teenage and younger years. And, uh, and confidence has never been, a, always been a difficult issue with me, even now. So I would probably, if I went back to my younger self, I would tell him to be more confident too. So, so yes, um, it's it's an issue. And well, um, unlike other writers, I write non-fiction. So if we look at the, the Vincent Price book, we, uh, there's obviously several books written about him. Uh, and same with Kirst Torres, there's several individual books written about these actors as well, if you read various biographies and autobiographies. Uh, so you got. A, so I think when I'm writing that, you had a, I already had a good idea about the life of Vincent Price. And it was just, for what I wanted to try and do was elaborate on it by emphasising a different tack on his, uh, on his life and career by his association with England. So I think I had the basics there. Uh, I think with the Vincent Price one as well, I also wrote a, a magazine article for a webmag called Shadowlocked and basically called Vincent Price the British Connection. So, what I, so I was kind of fortunate, I just expanded it into book form. And, uh, but yeah, I, I think when it comes to bios, you've got to, most people have a base, basic idea about the life and times of the person that they're writing about. Uh, oh. And uh, do you, uh, how do you, pro what's your special angles that you might use? Oh, special angles, okay. Um, well, I think with the Vincent Price book, my, my, my emphasis was on the films, the, the, the British films he did themselves. And all my specific angles, um, with Cursed Horror Stars, my specific angle was the fact that uh, there was a big down, that with the five actors I've written about, there was a downside in their involvement in a particular movie genre, which is the horror genre, which was basically typecasting, was, the, was basically a killer for, for, for a lot of actors, especially in the Hollywood years. Uh, and I just emphasize that by other elements that these actors had uh, been, uh, were, were very much linked to, such as alcoholism, drug addiction, and sometimes just plain bad luck. So that was my, so I think that was my angle, that was my hook for, for Cursed Horror Stars. And of course my hook for the Vincent Price book was simply the fact that he had the unique position of actually making a number of very, very good films in Britain that were equal as, as Hollywood horror output. It was, I think he was unique. He had a, he, he was greatly influential on both sides of the Atlantic when it came to the horror genre. Uh, so the hook was, I want to es establish his, uh, his British links from as far back as uh, when he began his, he actually began his acting career in, on the London stage. And um, so that, that's the, the, the eventual hooks and angles that I've got. What, oh yeah, okay. uh, what fascinates you about the genre uh, that you write and what other genres do you use for inspiration? <laughs> oh right, well I'm a movie buff, simple as that and uh, I grew up, uh, as a child I, w I remember watching the horror double bill on a Saturday evening which was absolutely amazing and I grew up watching these people, my, my actual movie hero was Peter Cushing uh, with Vinnie being a very close second and I would say, uh, yeah, films, it was a huge, huge, it was, it, it, it entered me into another world. And I think that's it, it's just, I think my angle with, with, with the influence is just, I just love movies. It's, they're inspir I found them inspirational. Not just horror, I love um, British comedy, uh, I love the you know, carry on films and so on. I like, I, I, I'm a big fan of James Bond. And I like other, other stuff, you know, westerns, that, war films, a, any kind of movies. Uh, so really, I think the influence is just the movies themselves. That gives me something that, uh, to work with. Uh, so really, I love the, the people I've written about, I've got great admiration for and the, and the films they do, so yeah, it's a big love. I think that's what it is. Yeah, so think, think about like how life can get in the way of writing. Uh, Ooh, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> um, so how, how do you keep yourself 
focus with through yeah, you know, it's like, it can be difficult, especially. I mean, COVID's been a bit of a struggle with a lot of people. As as you know, I'm, I'm basically preaching to the converted here. It has been difficult because I do have sadly a nine to five job as a civil servant and there are occasions when if I go home I'm, I'm just too tired I even want to think about doing anything I'll just um, but on the plus side you know I still have my weekends and I always make sure that I'm, I set my own little timetable up about how much writing I'm going to do I always go to the gym uh, and, and then I just work and I work on what I do uh, I haven't done in terms of uh, I'm working on a third book but what I have been doing during the COVID hiatus if you like is I've contributed to several uh, pieces uh, for the magazine We Belong Dead for a number of book publications that they, they've done and um, most recent one being on Hammer Horror. Story. This is Mastermind isn't it? Yeah. I was going to say pass but no I'm going to tell you this one. <laughs> Alright Cursed Horror Stars we'll have a look there this one. Uh, obviously I was you know, check, moving, moving around from publisher to publisher, getting the obligatory no's. And Telos, uh, it was actually, uh, it, the address was given to me by a dear friend uh, called Elsie Tinker, who, who was very much involved in the, in the goth scene. And, uh, and she said, try them out, just send them an inquiry note. So I said, all right, so I emailed them an inquiry uh, letter or email um, the night before. And then, uh, as, as most people know anyway, I do play guitar and I play at open mic nights. It was, I was coming home from one particular open mic night. I had some photos I'd taken for the night, so I got home, put my computer on, made a cover, and um, just ready just to upload them on the computer and then put them on a Facebook album I created. Uh, but I checked my emails and I had a message from Stephen Walker from Telos Publishing saying, yes, we're interested. You can imagine the shock to the system. <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't get a wink of sleep that night. I was in a, absolute state of shock that someone said yes and uh, they said you know if you if we will sort out the advance for you all that and uh, if, if you are interested you want to give it a go and I thought this was an opportunity a bolt out the blue uh, a chance of a lifetime uh, it didn't matter if the advance wasn't big or, or if they were a small publishing house it didn't matter I, I had the chance to get my book in print I could worry about bigger <laughs> ones later now um, and what I did was I just uh, I said yes straight away they obviously Email me the contracts to print off, ready to sign, and so on. And I can recall I had a, a wonderful friend of mine, a former girlfriend of mine, and uh, who's still a wonderful friend now, and we, we, she's, who's been very supportive of this. And uh, she was also, oddly enough, a neighbour. She lived over the road for me. So I can I remember that night very well, when uh, the following day from when I was told they said yes, I sent her a text saying, Are you in tonight? I need to see you. And uh, she said yes, and so on. And basically, I, she, she already knew, she kind of had an idea what it was about because I brought the contracts in for her to look at. She was an accountant, and I believe her, her dad was in the process of retiring, so she was winding down his business. So it was like an extra a set of eyes and someone who, who was a bit more of a on legal and contractual stuff than I was. We went through it. Um, she liked what was what they offered me and so on. Uh, we drank copious amounts of red wine and the pair of us were absolutely blossom by the end of the night because we were like celebrating. But I always remember the nice thing was she, she some years, about a year or so later, she told me that if she was out with, with friends or had a work night out that particular night and she got that, my message, she would have cut it short and gone straight home because she kind of knew what it was. I think it's women's intuition. <laughs> what they're doing and that was it and then eventually it all became great but I was so terrified of what was going to happen if something was going to go wrong and all that with the exception of a, of a handful of people I didn't tell a soul until nearer the time it was getting published and I thought hey, let's tell the Facebook world eh? Awesome. Um, so advertisements mm -hmm. right well okay right I shall move forward uh, <laughs> go with the first book here my first one, which came out uh, in November 2015, Cursed Horror Stars, The Life and Times of, as you can see here, um, Don Cheney Jr., Basil Rathbone, Peter Laurie, Bella Lugosi, and Robert Quarry, who's also the rather distinguished looking fella at the front. And, like I say, and, um, and it's basically the life and times of uh, really five tra very, very tragic people who, uh, because of their association with the genre, basically led, led, to, led to some serious career declines. Uh, it's also notable for the fact that uh, no one, to my knowledge anyway, has ever written a chapter devoted to Robert Quarry. He's very much an unknown entity and he's an actor I'm, I'm very much still fascinated with even to this day. And like I said, it was Don Telos and I eventually did book talks for it and so on. So it's 
Uh, available from Telos Publishing. Uh, it's from yeah, or Amazon and so on. Fifteen ninety nine, which is retail price, and um, I've had some very good reviews uh, on the Amazon page. So, okay, with that, with book number two, again published by Telos. Um, they were very pleased with me promoting myself quite a lot. So, like I said, this was an expansion of an article I'd written for Shadowlock called Vincent Price, The British Connection. It's, it's really about his career, but with a different slide on it because it emphasizes his very strong links to England. You know, his second wife was British. Uh, he traveled to England when he was 17. He was an art student in London, and that's where he made his acting debut. And actually, he became a stage actor, and he played a lot of very British characters. He had a very distinctive mid-Atlantic voice. So, uh, and then it wasn't until the mid-60s when he came to England to do Mask of the Red Death. And then from then on, his subsequent films were made in the UK, including uh, probably his finest work, which included Witchfinder General, uh, The Abominable Dr. Fives, and Theatre of Blood. So, uh, so he really had this most amazing life. And we also cover the fact he was a raconteur, he was an accomplished gourmet chef, uh, uh, an arts expert. And so all that. So the first half of the book is about his life and times and his career, and the second half focuses on the films he made in the UK. Again, it's Telos Publishing, again, it's 1599. You can get it from the publishers, you can get it from Amazon. Um, you can get it from me, if you're from passing. <laughs> so here you go. I'll happily sign it for you. Please make me rich. <laughs>